Joining the Spirit's work isn't always easy, but it's always worth it, guaranteed. Last summer in 2012, I had a, the privilege, as we do each summer, we took 40 of our high school students for a two-week mission trip to the Dominican Republic. And this year, I was especially excited because uh, we had the opportunity to partner with one of our own church missionaries, Chappie Dave Walden and his wife, Sandy. As a matter of fact, they're right here today. Can we give them a hand? Can you just put your hand up? Chappie Dave, Sandy. I love these guys. I love these guys. Chappie, um, man, just has such a testimony of the Spirit's work in his own life. He's inspired me for years, um, uh, just encouraged me. And he said, yeah, oh, Jim, if you guys are coming to the DR, we got to hook up, brother. We got to hook up. We got to do some ministry together. And one of the things that we talked about, uh, besides that he's in educating pastors in the DR and, and, and encouraging churches and he- helping them set up different programs, he also does stuff right on the edge, man. And Chappie Dave went into a maximum security men's prison with thousands and thousands of hardcore criminals. They're in there for things like murder and piracy and rape and violence and major theft. And Chappie goes in there, trusting the Spirit, and starts a ministry with these men, establishes churches in this type of environment, in a prison in another country. And he says, hey, brother, let's bring the kids in there. And we'll minister to him. <laughs> Whoa, baby. And he goes, yeah, let's do it. I brought other people in there. This will be great. So he says, let's pray about it. So we started praying about it. And we prayed for months about that possible opportunity. And I was, I was all excited about it. His enthusiasm is contagious, let me tell you. So we get in the DR. And we get to our base camp. And, and Chappie comes and some of the other leaders. And they, they tell our students some of the different ministries that we're going to be involved with. Um, but the prison ministry wasn't mentioned. Chappie came over to me, took me aside, and he said, Brother Jim, Pastor, Pastor Jim, I've got some tough news for you. You know, my wife and I, we've been praying about, you know, bringing the kids into the prison. I've been talking to to the prison pastor and some of the the Christian inmates there, and, you know, we're we're just not sure. Just, you know, we brought other people in there, but these are are high school kids from our home church, you know, boys, girls. I'm just not sure we can we can guarantee their safety, you know, and let's, you know, we need to pray about this, but I'm I'm just not sure the spirit is opening the door right now. And I listen to the words that Chappie shared with me, and I trust his devotion and connection to the Lord, that the Lord speaks to him honestly. He wouldn't bring us into something that that wouldn't be in our best interest. So I said, all right, that's fine. We'll put it on hold for now. We'll just keep it in our prayers. So we did. So we went along that week, and we did some of the other ministries that we had prepared to do. And after the first week, Chappie came back to me, and he was all excited. I mean, when he gets excited, he bounces. All right, I don't know if you know Chappie Dave. So he's kind of there, and he's, oh, Pastor Jim. I am blown away by your kids. He said, I have seen them in this 105, 110 degree heat build a home for a homeless family. I have seen them pray for that family and give them the keys to their new home. And I have seen the tears, brother, come down from that family in gratitude to the Lord. I have seen your students partner with poor little local churches and and go into partisan communities. And I have seen hundreds and hundreds of little Dominican children come to your VBS programs. And I've seen the smiles on their faces and the joy. And they've given their lives to Jesus. Your kids are so good with them. And I've seen your students do their drugs getting their makeup. They've gone out into the streets and into the parks and they've shared the good news about Jesus Christ and I've seen men and women give their lives to the Lord. It's incredible what the God has done through your kids. And I'm like, yeah, it's been awesome, hasn't it? He goes, and you know what? I shared this with the prisoners in the prison and the leadership. And they were praying the whole week when you guys were out there and we feel the Spirit is telling us now, bring them. Bring them. He said, but as you do, let's not bring the whole group. Let's just bring half the group. It'll be a little bit easier for us to control that. But would you be willing to do that? Would you be comfortable with that, Pastor Jim? And I just kind of smiled at Chappie. I trust him. I trust his walk with the Lord. And I just said, look, hey, these trips are all about 
trusting the Lord, going out of our comfort zones. If the Spirit closed the door, but now he's opening it, who am I to close it? So I said, yeah, let's go. So the day came, and myself and 20 of our students, some of our leaders, went with Chappie Dave, some of his staff, and, and we came to the La Victoria men's prison. It's an intimidating structure. The, the wall around the prison is two or three stories high with barbed wire, armed guards. But within the, the prison, within the walls, it's kind of just its own little weird prison city. You know, when you're a prisoner, you're thrown in there, and you're pretty much on your own to fend for yourself, for food, for protection. It's not like our American prisons. So we came in, and they searched us, and it was, it was scary. It was kind of intense, and, and my kids were, I could tell, they were a little nervous. So, you know, Chappie prayed for us, for the Spirit's presence, for his protection. And then he took us on a little tour, kind of around the outside of the prison. We didn't go in the middle yet, and he, he showed us a garden that he'd got going with some of the prisoners so they could start growing some of their own vegetables. He showed us a workshop that they had there, a clinic, some things like that. And then he took us to one of the churches within the prison walls, and, and we came in, and there were some of the Christians there, some of the inmates, and the pastor had a big smile on his face, and he was a prisoner too. And he opened his arms, and he just said, here you are. We've prayed for you, and you have come. Praise the Lord. You're here to minister to us. Now, of course, he said all that in Spanish, and we didn't understand a word he was saying. <laughs> but with the interpreter... Then we understood, and he came, and, and he and the prisoners hugged us, and they prayed for us. And then they said, now it's time. Now it's time to go lead your worship service. And they told us it's across the prison yard, and there'll probably be about 30 inmates there. And so they lined us up. They put the, the girls, teenage girls, in the middle. They put some boys in the front, some boys in the back. Some of the, uh, the inmate uh, Christians were surrounding us. And we headed off, and our hearts, <laughs> they were beating. We walked right through the central yard of this maximum security prison. And uh, thousands of eyes were right on us. And uh, some of the prisoners were hooting. They were making some gestures. They were making some comments. You know, we're all getting a little nervous. We're looking at each other. And I prayed. I prayed, you know. <laughs> And we continued to walk, and the kids are looking at me like, is this a good idea? And, it, and for a minute, I just looked up to God, and I said, what am I thinking? Am I nuts? Taking a bunch of American high school kids, not just on a mission trip, but in the middle of a prison? And at that point, I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me and just said, Jim, my presence is with you. And with my presence comes my protection. Have faith. And my heart was settled. And we went through that prison yard, and it opened up into a large baseball field. <laughs> Go figure, Dominican Republic. Big baseball field in the middle of the prison. And out in the outfield, I could see where the prisoners had gathered to receive us for the worship service. But there wasn't 30 prisoners. There were over 350 prisoners waiting for us. So we walked out, and they, uh, they applauded our high school students. They were so excited that we were there. And then the, the kids began their drama, and they were in makeup, and there was music playing in the background, and they depicted this, this young teenage girl who had a close relationship with God, but then she pushed God away, and she gave in to the temptations of the world, things like vanity and drug and alcohol abuse and sex. And, and as the drama went on, I could see, man, the prisoners, they were just focused. Not one eye was off our kids, they were right there. And then it shows the girl getting abused by her boyfriend, and she falls into depression and suicide. I see tears start to flow on the faces of the prisoners. I looked over to Chappie David. He looks back at me and just gives me a thumbs up. Spirit is working. And he was. He was. At the end, like I said, the girl becomes depressed and suicidal. And finally, she cries out to the Lord, Jesus, save me. And the prisoners are giving glory to God. And, and then one of the students comes out as, as Jesus and takes the sin off her and puts them on himself. And then it shows Jesus dying on the cross for forgiveness 
and salvation. And the inmates all applauded. They all applauded. Glory to God. Glory to God. It was amazing. It was amazing, the presence of the Spirit at that moment. And then one of our, our teenagers got up and shared a personal testimony of the difference that knowing the Lord made in his life. And then the inmate pastor who was in for murder came up and said, you know, if God's Spirit can change a hardened heart like mine, he can change yours. And prisoners were on their knees, literally weeping in repentance. Some actually were prostrated in the dirt, crying out to God. The Spirit was working. I had the opportunity to close the service, and I gave an invitation to trust Jesus as your Savior. And 35 men that day gave their lives to Christ for the very first time. Praise the Lord. It was awesome. Awesome. Our students were blown away at how God had led them, protected them, and used them in that ministry experience. As we left, Chappie Dave just kind of put his arm around me and he said, Brother Jim, Pastor, that was one of the most incredible demonstrations of the Holy Spirit's power that I have seen in that prison ministry. And it happened because we listened to the voice of the Spirit and we allowed him to use us. Praise God. Now, you don't have to go on a mission trip or go in a prison to see the Spirit work in your life. But you do need to try to listen to him because he's got work to do in our own lives. Maybe he's got some work for you to do in your own family, where you work, where you go to school, maybe here in our church, somewhere out in our community, maybe in the world. The Spirit's working. Are you willing to join him in his work? 